So for this video, we're going to be discussing the Maclaurin series. For numerical methods, the Maclaurin series is a very important concept in which we will use probably throughout the rest of this course. Uh, if not the particular idea, we will be using the concepts of the true value and the approximate relative uh, value to calculate errors. So the Maclaurin series, what is the Maclaurin series? It's basically a series of elements in which it uses derivatives in order to find approximation of, uh, of a value of a function. So uh, here we have the first three general terms of the Maclaurin series. And the Maclaurin series is, uh, is a Taylor series. If, if you're not familiar with uh, Calculus 2, or if you haven't learned this yet in your Calculus 2 class, you have, you have a Maclaurin series in a case where it's, no, it's really no different than the Taylor series, where all it is is, is just x is equal to 0 rather than, um, rather than you have it at a different number. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an example to show you how to properly set up and solve a Maclaurin series. Say, let's say you're given an example and it asks you to find the Maclaurin series at function, say you're given a function f at x, so we'll call this example one. f at x is equal to ex. So this is simple. This is just say some function is equal to uh, ex. So this is probably the simplest question you can get for a Maclaurin series. And you're going to see why I say this. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up a chart method. On your left, I suggest that you put your function at x and then you go ahead and then you write ex. To the right, you're going to evaluate it at f at 0. The reason we evaluated f at 0 is because x is equal to 0 in a case of a Maclaurin series. So if you go ahead and you go on your calculator and then you plug e to the 0, you're going to see that you're actually going to get 1 as your answer. Right? So if you just do e to the 0 on your calculator, you will go ahead and you will get 1. So this is good. This is going to be useful for your first term. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to take the derivative of uh, e to the x. So uh, I'm going to guess, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to guess most of you are very familiar with taking derivatives. But if for some reason you're not, if you were to take the derivative of e to the x, all you do is you take the coefficient beside the x and then you multiply it. Uh, and then you multiply the whole function. In this case, e to the x, we have uh, 1 in front, so you would just get e to the x. Whereas if you had e to the 2x, you would go ahead and you will multiply the whole function by 2, and then you would get 2e to the 2x. So if you're not familiar with these concepts, I highly recommend that you review these concepts first because this is very important for Maclaurin series uh, and Taylor series. So you must be familiar with those concepts or else you're going to struggle a lot. So taking the first derivative of e to the x, you're going to get the same function e to the x. Here, you're going to want to do the same thing we did before on the right, but instead we're going to say evaluate the function at the first derivative now. So this function did not change. So you just go ahead and you plug e to the 0 in the first derivative function. And what you're going to see is we're going to get 1 again. So I'm going to repeat this process two more times. So now we take the second derivative of that function. And then this does not change. We get e to the x again. And then if you evaluate the second function at 0, you're going to get 1 again. So we see that we got one over here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I will do an evaluation here for a triple derivative for the same function e to the x, and then f triple. You would go ahead and you would evaluate it at 0 for the third derivative, and then you would get 1 here. So what we can take away from this is if we look at... Uh, our general equation we have here and then also this one here we can see that the term to approximate this would be given as this it would be given as 
the first thing you want to do is you want to use the constant. So f at x is equal to 1 because we're using the first number here. And that's the constant f evaluated at 0. Now, if we're doing, uh, now if we're evaluating the second term here, and if we're evaluating the second term, it should actually look like this. If we have, if we have uh, an evaluation here, it should look like plus x. I think these here, I think you should have an x term here. So the first one is a constant, but the second one you have here is is actually different because these these have x terms. It's only for your first one that you're not going to have an x term. I guess this general form we have here is better to use. And then for your term at the bottom, what you're going to have is you're going to evaluate the function, the second derivative, derivative what we got at. We're going to have 1 and we're going to do the 1 and then this should be squared as well. It, it's better if we use the top term here, so or the top uh, the top function we have for the series, and then what you want to do is you do one over two prime, and this one would be x squared. So two prime, if you're not familiar with two prime, it just means one times two, and if you had three prime, three prime is equal to one times two times three. So 2 prime is equal to 2, and then for this example, you would have it equal to 6. And uh, if you're not familiar with the prime, with 2 prime, 3 prime, and any prime number, if you're multiplying by that, uh, I highly recommend that you do, you do some research on that, so it would make your life easier. And then here, right now, we have the first term we have written. We have the second term. This is the second term here. The third term. And then let's see our, for our last term we have. Our last term will be this one. So for our last term, the process does not change. So you look at uh, f triple prime, which you evaluated for that one. And then what you got there is 1. So you do 1 over 3 prime x cubed. So for this case, I've chosen to evaluate, uh, evaluate for the first four terms that we see. Uh, your question may ask you to evaluate for the first three terms, two terms. But basically, we have here one, two, three, four terms. And this is good for four terms. So what we can take away from this is your first number is going to be a constant. And it's going to be the number that you evaluated for your f at 0, which was 1 in this case. The x we ha we got here was we just did uh, we just did f at prime as you can see here we took what we evaluated at zero because the Maclaurin series is x at zero so we did one over one prime times x and the reason I chose not to write the one prime is because if you do 1 times 1, obviously it's equal to 1. And it's kind of repetitive, so there's no need to do that. So that's where we got that x term. And then the same thing applies for the uh, 1 half uh, x squared. So we're going to go ahead here, and we're actually going to work with another example. And this example we're going to work with. Yeah, let me. This example we're going to work with here is going to be a little different. And this example is, is going to show you where the case isn't always 1. Because the case we just did, it is the simplest case you can do. And most likely your professor or your teacher is not going to give you a case that simple. So let's say we were given an example where we were given to evaluate it at, uh, let's choose f at x is equal to, let's choose a trig function. Let's say sine x, sine x. So this one is different. 
it's very straightforward as well and the process does not change. So the first thing you want to do is you want to evaluate or you want to say f at x. Just write the original function out. f at x is equal to sine x. And on the right, evaluate it at 0. And then if you do sine at 0, you're going to get 0. And then as well, we are working with the Maclaurin series here. So I'm just going to write that here. Maclaurin series. And nothing changes here. Maclaurin series is still evalu evaluated at x is equal to 0. So I'm going to just put that here x is equal to 0. You're just evaluating the function at x is equal to 0. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do it for the first four terms. So if you go ahead and you take the first derivative of sine, you're going to get cos x. If you take the first derivative of sine x, you get cos x. If you evaluate this function, the first derivative, you're going to get the value of 1. So if you plug cos 0, you're going to get 1. You're going to keep repeating the process. We're going to do the second derivative here. And the second derivative is negative sine x. And then evaluate this at the second derivative. You get 0 again. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the third derivative. We're going to get negative cos x. And then if you evaluate negative cos x at 0, you're going to see that now you get negative 1. So to approximate your answer or to write the Maclaurin series, you simply go ahead and you write out all your terms. So f at x, the first thing you have here is that your constant that we talked about is equal to 0. So you do 0 as your first term. Your second term here, you have a term. And we talked about the second term is you do the number you got. So we will call it C1, for example. C1 will be the number we got. And you will do C1 x over 1 prime. So we here, for that one, we got 1. So we got 1x. And simply 1x, you can just go ahead and write 1x simply as writing x. For your third term, we don't actually have a term because we have 0. And if you were to do 0 over 2 prime x squared, cancels out. So that doesn't really work out. So for that one, for your third term, we will have 0, and then you can write 0, and I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. And your fourth term, your fourth term is going to be very simple, it will be negative, so instead of putting plus, you put negative, and this one will become x3, 3, 3 prime. And this right here is the Maclaurin series for sine x. So I hope you guys uh, liked this video. If you liked it, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please make sure to leave it in the comment section below. If you would like me to review uh, more concepts on Maclaurin series, please just give me your examples, uh, which examples you want solved. And the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to be talking about approximating the function the true relative percent error between the true value and the value that the Maclaurin series gives you. So if you want to go ahead and check that video out, please watch the next video. And if you're taking numerical methods, that video is basically going to start teaching you the, uh, the basic requirements of the whole course because in numerical methods, all you're doing is you're using different methods to approximate how, how close you are to, actual, to the actual value. So this concludes this video and please make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you.